This is day three of 20 days of learning with Illustrator. The beard's coming along pretty good. Now let's talk about pads and strokes. Whenever you have an object in Illustrator, usually this object is made up of paths. If I select this line right here, you'll notice that the bounding box doesn't actually cover the entire shape. That's because it's covering what's called the path. The black part of the line that you see is actually the stroke. I can modify the properties of the stroke without actually modifying the path. There's more properties on the stroke that I can modify by clicking the three lines and clicking show options. We're not gonna talk about these. They're pretty easy to use, so I recommend you explore them for yourself. To access the width tool, click on what looks like a gesture hat in the toolbar. The width tool can be used to modify the stroke in specific places on your path. So I can click various places and adjust the stroke so that it's not a single uniform line. This can be helpful when I want to create some variation in my design. By clicking and holding the width tool in the toolbar, you'll see there's seven additional tools underneath the width tool. Before we use the tool, we may want to adjust the diameter of the tool. I can do this by clicking Alt and dragging with my mouse cursor. If I hold Shift, it will maintain the same constraints, so I can make the tool bigger or smaller, but it stays circular. You can also modify the properties of the tool by double clicking on the tool itself. This will open up a dialog box where you can choose many settings. I'm not going to change the settings in this case, but this is something you'll want to play with as you become familiar with the tools. Let's look at what each one of the tools do. To use each of these tools, you usually have to select the object that you're working with, but that may not always be the case. You may just have to practice to see what happens. So the warp tool is really simple to use. You just click and drag through your path. It's going to adjust your path based on where you move the tool. This is something that might take a little practice, but it gives you a little bit of variation in your path. Next, we have the twirl tool. This creates a really interesting twirl effect on your paths. It's easy to use. You can modify the properties to change how it twirls and how quickly it twirls. The pucker tool pulls the line out at a specific point, creating some really sharp points to your path. The bloat tool pushes your path away from your cursor, creating a very cloud billowy effect with your path. The scallop tool will pull the path towards your cursor, but it does so in multiple points and creates more of a rounded corner. Crystallize will push the path away from your cursor, but it does so in multiple points and it creates very sharp points within your path. The wrinkle tool will vibrate your path in different directions, creating a very random effect and resulting in a wrinkly path. Now let's look at how these tools can be used in a real life scenario. In this example, the two trees on the outside represent trees that haven't been modified, and this tree has been modified using the tools that we talked about today. I'm not going to end up with the same result in this example, simply because it takes a lot of time to create content in Illustrator. Hopefully, you're still able to get the idea of how these tools can be used. Before I start, I should mention that these tools require practice. This is not a skill that comes overnight, and you'll have to try using them several times before you feel comfortable with using the tool and even knowing when to use the tool. Let's start by modifying my tree trunk. So I'll I'll select it and in this case I'm going to use the bloat tool however I know I'm going to have to adjust the properties because I don't need intensity of 40 let's change it to just 6% now I'll zoom in and start adjusting my paths using the bloat tool kind of giving myself a little bit more of a, a, a round effect with my tree trunk kind of making it round out a little bit I'm gonna zoom out here and kind of wiggle my cursor along here as I as I uh, apply my bloat tool so I like that. It's a little bit funky, a little bit strange. Uh, after I apply some shading, it will probably look a lot better. I'm not going to do that in this video, but you get the idea of getting the shape. For the top of the tree, I'm actually going to use the pucker tool, and I'll need to adjust the settings back to their default settings in this case. To apply the pucker tool, I'm simply going to click and pull outward to create that spiky tree effect that I'm looking for. I'm going to do this all along the tree, giving myself a lot of variety in my tree. It's kind of nice because nature is unique and I'm always going to get something a little bit different, especially on these other sides. They're not really looking the way I want, so I may have to play with it a little bit. The bottom of my tree really should have some effects as well. That's as far as I'm going to do with this drawing, but this is a really good example of how that middle tree was looking before I started applying additional effects. Remember, as you get started, this is going to take practice. What I recommend you do is go find some images online that you want to replicate. Here's some examples I have here. This image right here was my inspiration for the tree in the middle. Though they don't look exactly the same, I kind of got what I wanted. I got a unique looking tree. Here's an example of other trees that could be created and used as inspiration. What's nice about the tools we talked about today is that you'll get a lot of variability and you won't end up looking like you copied someone else's work, but you'll get a similar effect. That's everything I've got for you today. Thanks so much for tuning in and we'll see you tomorrow. Thanks. Bye.